Ahla wa sahlan. Welcome everybody. I hope you guys are having a fantastic. Is it working now? It should be working now. Is that better? Okay, let me just change a little setting on the camera here. Du, du, du. Okay, so let's put this a bit up. Okay, that's better, yeah? You guys can can see now. And you can hear as well, alhamdulillah. Right, so welcome, welcome to this live stream, guys. My name is Jakob Zaman. Let me just go on Instagram as well. Ahla wa sound should be working now. I've been experimenting with this camera, trying to do some new things and trying to get some new light on this. See how that works. Yeah, see, there's still some flickering in the background. You can see light flickering. So the ISO, I need to adjust. Let's just try to adjust the ISO here. Uh, that's a bit too bright. All right, so let's get on with this then. So I do apologize for that rough intro there, but inshallah, it should be, should be working fine now. Let me just like, put the light up here. <clears throat> So, wa alaikum assalam, Aisha, ahla wa sahlan, wa alaikum assalam, Abu Bakr, mashallah, Aragon, wa alaikum assalam, ahla wa sahlan, Islamically, what is our obligation in assisting people where would it be sinful if we didn't help, i.e. masjid? I go to committee members are not welcome and restrict water bottles to the congregation. I used to help with errands, uh, however, I have now stopped. Will I be sinful? No, you won't be sinful for that. So the, the rule to remember about supporting sin is that if it's connected to directly to an act which is a sin, recognized as a sin in Sharia. So for example, like uh, drinking wine, if you were to give someone wine in their hand and you know they're going to drink it, that would be considered to be supporting someone in sin, basically. That's supporting someone in sin. Um, yeah. What? Are the situations when parents' requests are not required to be obeyed, for example, for anything pertaining to personal opinion, preference, dunya-related actions, are parents to be obeyed? So the general rule is that you should obey your parents. The rule is you obey your parents in everything unless they command you to do something which is against Islam. Yeah, so something which is against, that's the general rule. Days. However, when it comes to issues which their opinion in and of itself is going to harm some, something else in your life, then you don't have to obey them. So, for example, if they're telling you to divorce your your wife, um, uh, or, or not to do something which is 
highly rewarding, then, then you don't have to listen to them. Have all the minus signs of judgment, Allah knows best. What are some minor signs? So the, the problem with minor signs is we don't know, we don't know what, uh, if we were to see them, we wouldn't know, is this 100% a minor sign or not? So some people, for example, assume some of the minor signs had all ex finished like 100, 300 years ago. And some people think there's still, there's, they, they, there's still some to come. Yeah, so that's basically, uh, that's basically the issue. So it's, it's, it's one of those kind of ones. So, I mean, if you, if you kind of interpret a lot of the minor signs, you would probably say it's possible that all the minor signs have come. You can possibly say that. But the thing is, we don't, application is the issue. So we hear the hadith about a minor sign, right? So for example, like we hear the hadith about, um, you know, alcohol is going to be widespread. So someone says, ah, oh, well, it's widespread today. Maybe that is a sign. Or maybe it's going to get worse than this. I don't understand. Why wasn't it working? Uh, because I, I, I adjusted some of the settings. So because I adjusted some of the settings, uh, sometimes see with, with with the setups, you have to remember, you have to know the effect each setting is going to have on the image, on the lighting, on the quality. So if sometimes on a site, on a on a lighting system or on a camera system, if you just change one setting slightly, then you have to recalibrate a lot of other things to compensate for that one setting. Right. Um, Ahla wa sahlan. Alaykum Sound still. Sound still off. Uh, Adam, ahla wa sahlan. Be good. Wa alaykum as salam. Asim, it's okay. It's working now after I've left the live feed and clicked back on. Uh, what you did has worked. Ahla wa sahlan. Kindly answer the questions from the beginning. If a person has a stoma bag, what's the ruling for prayer? So they, they perform wudu for every salat. So they do a fresh wudu for every salat and that wudu will last them all the way to the next salat. Ya danna wa alaykum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan. Ahla wa sahlan, my brother. Student. Will the language of Jannah be Arabic? Allah knows best. We don't have any authentic hadith to prove this. Or is this just opinion? So there are some narrations but many of the scholars have criticized the chains of that narrations. Some have classed the narrations as fabricated, some have classed them as being extremely weak. So that's the, the problem with, with these narrations. Uh, also, if clothes are difficult to remain pure and a person is old and find difficult to wash, change, how do they pray? So then if they find it very difficult, they just pray in those clothes. In. PDF is travel insurance permitted only if it is very, very uh, likely that something bad is going to happen that's going to cost them a lot. Yeah, only if something bad is going to happen, which is going to result in costing them a lot. So then, out of necessity, they can take out uh, travel insurance. But otherwise, if there's a very slim chance something's going to happen, then no. Is it allowed to be a CSI? What's a CSI? I don't know what CSI is. What is it? If you're going to elaborate. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope you're well. Ahlan wa sahlan, my brother Muhammad. Uh, is it permissible for, alaikum salam kanda, is it permissible for men to wear a ring that features a stone on the index finger? So, like, yes and no. Hanafi's original position is that men are not allowed to wear anything that is jewellery. And then some later Hanafis have given fatwa on the Shafi Madhab and others that they can wear a ring because the Prophet wore a ring and uh, you know, out of imitating him. And as for a stone, then then they permit the wearing of a stone as well. Is it permissible for a woman to become a pilot? Um, I, I, I would, what would the problem be? I can't, I can't seem to see a problem in that. Besides the fact that the traveling issue is in it. So if you put the traveling issue to a side without a mahram, you know, if, if we were to say that She's obviously protected and safeguarded and all of that. The only issue would be the mahram issue. And then there's, there's you know, ikhtilaf in that in many contemporary scholars. Uh, student, Allah says, Inna Allah la yahdi al However, the one-time Islamophobe politician. Uh, so Allah says, qawm al See, Allah says, qawm is, is a nation. So oppressive nations will not be guided. Oppressive nations 
Yeah, so Allah doesn't say the oppressive individual. Because technically we are, we're all oppressive in some, some sense or not, but the Qawm al is talking about a mass, a mass level. So mass conversions of Qawm al won't take place. Individual conversions, so like uh, Qawm al would be like the people of Fir'aun. Allah did not guide the people of Fir'aun in mass, mass levels. But individuals were guided. Wa alaikum as mashallah, Ryan, ahla wa sahlan, may Allah bless you, put barakah in your wealth and efforts and health and uh, give you happiness in this dunya and akhirah. Ameen. Question Is the ruling of not uh, replying to a non Muslim saying Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh pretty much unanimous? No, this is a, not a categorical ruling. In fact, the Hanafis do allow saying it. The, but, so let me explain to you basically what happened. So, what happened was in the time of the Prophet, Sallam, on one occasion, a Jew came and he said to the Prophet, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum. Sam alaikum. So Sam means like death, poison, death be upon you. So he said it in such a way that he was he was trying to he was trying to murmur it, like camouflage it under his voice. So so he was trying to kind of like get his other mates to kind of laugh. So Aisha Radiolan had got angry and the Prophet said, calm down, it's okay. I said to him, Wa alaikum. That's it. Yeah, alaikum. So the idea is, is that. If obviously people are mocking, people are using it in a hostile way, then we don't because salam means peace, isn't it? We're not giving them peace. But if it's a non-Muslim who is at peace with you, then the Hanafis have said that if there is a need to give salam or to respond to the salam, then there wouldn't be a problem there. Uh, I have an elder Sikh neighbor who treats us pleasant and say, Alaikum, so yes, I wouldn't see a problem with it. With the current rise in inflation, what are your thoughts in investing in gold and silver? I don't know, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, I've heard some people say it's a good investment to make. I mean, I wish I had invested in gold maybe like four or five years ago when gold prices were like 30, 30 pounds per, per gram. Um, but I'm not too sure about financial advice. If one is constantly bleeding, is it necessary to be bleeding within an entire Salah time or is it time ending enough to be ma'dur? So to become a ma'dur, the, the entire duration of Salat has to be occupied with that problem except for the duration or, or so I, I pray like this to people if it's if it's it taking up the entire time so much so that there is less than there is less than uh, 10 minutes let's say there is less than 10 minutes for a person to not have that problem, 10-15 minutes I say. So let's say Zora starts at 12, it ends at 3, and you've got like a cut, and you're bleeding, and it's not stopping, it's coming out slowly, little bits, bit by bit. So technically your wudu is not being done. So as long as all that time has passed, and you've only got a little bit of time to pray, you pray, and now you're ma'adhur. Once you become ma'adhur, after 3 o'clock, then you don't have to have that problem for the entire duration of the salat. You only have to have it, at least one incident of it. Umair, wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan, mashaAllah, Umair, ahla wa sahlan, welcome, Mawlana. Anything specific from Islam pertain to how to make armpits smell nicer without using utter deodorant? Um, I don't think there is anything authentic in Islam. So, you know, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us, or he told us that we should pluck the armpit hair. So the armpit hair should be plucked. And Imam Shafi says that if you can't pluck it, then you, you can shave it. Right, so some of the scholars say maybe the wisdom behind plucking it is that it gets rid of the, the, the hair at the root, so there's no bad odor. But the problem is, is that this is not considered to be what the Prophet ﷺ was saying. The Prophet ﷺ just told us to remove the hair. He wasn't telling us this is the wisdom or anything else. Now there could be people with medical issues. Some people they eat fast food and then their their sweat starts smelling. Some people are just from a certain their DNA. Yeah, the, the, the genetics that they have has certain types of odor. So it could be a different thing. I, I don't I don't know any authentic narration or verse of the Quran that mentions that. Nada wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan. A CSI is a crime scene investigator. Yeah, then I wouldn't see any problem investigating a crime. When some Sahaba sat down in the Battle of Uhud when they heard a rumor the Prophet ﷺ had been martyred, were they at this point going against the command of Islam and committing a sin? Uh, no, no, they won't. 
I don't say how how would they be I can't can't think seem to think like what command would they be going against uh you're welcome Aisha and Nadim wa alaikum assalam ahla wa sahlan I haven't been on here for a while I know my brother how are you everything good uh, in case of a dispute between husband and wife with regards to divorce where wife swears that he divorced her and husband denies it how is it disputes so normally in an islamic country you go to a court you go to an islamic court and obviously in any court 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 case there has to be witnesses there so if she's got witnesses then obviously she can prove that he said it if she doesn't have witnesses the the courts are going to tell the husband to swear an oath that he uh, whether he swore an oath or not Whether he gave divorce or not And if he swears an oath Then obviously the, the case is in his favour If he doesn't swear an oath Then then the case is in the favour of the woman There's a ikhtilaf between Abu Hanifa and Sahibin on this issue Now when it comes to these kind of court kick issues The thing we have to remember is that According to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, Whatever the judge decides Irrespective of what's really happened behind the scenes Between the husband and wife the court's decision is going to be the ultimate decider. So even if the man did divorce her, but in court it can't be proven, right? It will still be considered to be a valid marriage, and the woman can continue her relations with the husband. Uh, Nadi Mogul, ahla wa sahlan. Distance travel without mahram interacting with non mahram. Yeah. So, so the, the issue of yeah. So those will, will be the issues. Staying with staff in hotels alone. So I assume in the hotel they'll be in their own room, I assume, assume yeah? Yeah, in their own room. Again, like these kind of careers are not ideal careers for women from an Islamic point of view. There has to be a limit on what kind of a career is considered to be something which is, which is uh, not something which is for women. Yeah, so for example, you know, like a bricklayer or a roofer or working on, a, on an oil rig. Something like that. These are not like her because the the culture the culture in these things is very toxic. It's a very toxic a man a manly culture, unfortunately, and that kind of culture can have a very bad impact on people. So we have to understand from an Islam point of view, there are certain things, certain types of jobs women shouldn't be doing. Uh, but on the other flip side, there are many jobs that women women should be going into, especially the ones where there is a need for women, like for example, female educators, um, med in, in medicine in these kind of areas. Um, but if a woman was to become a pilot Again, if, if she was to take the opinion Of those scholars who do allow her to travel Then there would be permissibility there Is there any circumstance under which Abortion is permissible uh, And the other thing that I just want to mention is Like we are speaking here from From an armchair Perspective here, we're just sitting back We don't really have A, a pilot that we can speak to and ask them Okay, what, behind the scenes what happens If you're a pilot, what happens Do men uh, do men, uh, you know, um, flirt with, with women uh, when, they, when they're in the cockpit? Um, you know, are women sort of like uh, treated in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a manner that's un-Islamic? Is there any circumstance under which abortion is permissible, e.g. a woman becomes pregnant due to a rape by a man? Possibly, yeah. Possibly. This is a long, long discussion. I would recommend reading an article written by Maulana Salman Yunus. Go to Google and type in, check for it. Mona Salman Yunus, from the Hanafi point of view. And there are many cases in which, um, okay, Alaikum Sir, any advice on raising daughters? I have no idea. Anyone can give advice. I don't have any daughters to give advice. I think someone who's got daughters, it would be best for them to, to give advice, inshallah. AMS, wa alaikum as salam. So what's your opinion on doctors working in certain special like OBS and, and gyna? As med students, I think we have placements in such fields on side note. What about the dissection? I don't know any of these, what you're saying OBS is. I think gyne gyne is gynecology. Um, and I don't know what dissection, cadre, 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 I don't know how to say that word. Um, again, these kind of things I, I, I need to know more information about. Right? Maybe speak to a scholar who's in the medical field to know about this. Like, What is the need for this and how important is it? Yeah, so again, I don't like speaking about things which I'm not too familiar with. I can give you like a general answer, but I wouldn't be comfortable with giving you like a an, a, an absolute answer on this. Also, if the wife claims that her idda has ended and her husband says it hasn't, how is that settled? So in courts, if she has said it's ended, then the court takes her statement because the only way that they can obviously test 
is the if the you know they're observing the blood menstrual blood three cycles and that's left to the woman so if she says and the duration of time since her husband divorced her and since her statement that my idda has ended is plausible right it's plausible that there could have been three menstrual cycles in that period of time then her word is taken for it according to Hanafis. Anas wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ahla wa sahlan student we where were there sahaba who committed murder or unlawful killing prior to embracing Islam if yes did embracing Islam wipe away the sin totally uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure if there was them there must have been like these kind of cases the thing the thing you have to remember is you know murder in Islam murder is treated as a case where it's against other people so in other words it's not a crime against Allah it's a crime against the society so if the society forgives you you're forgiven that's that's the idea yeah uh so that's how it works. obviously there's an element of toba there so if a person did do toba um but if a person did kill someone prior to islam then it's very very that and they become muslim then they, their life can be taken technically my wife and i want to visit my parents i also have brothers who are living in my, my parents would it be okay to be in a room with my brothers as well as long as she's she's covered up as long as she's only exposing her hands and face i wouldn't see a problem with that what would the problem be pdf the hanafis are taught that if the ramadan fast has begun one has to keep the fast even if one is traveling that day if i travel from jakarta at 10 a.m and i'm going to jeddah that is 10 hour flight and the day is getting much longer because there is a five hour time difference so for that fast is getting much longer does one need to fast in this scenario yeah it's a good it's a good question this is like a modern a modern sort of question where clearly the fast is going to go beyond like i experienced this myself i experienced this myself and the fast was very long i traveled from pakistan and i i, I started my fast in pakistan and then I missed my flight and then a lot, a lot of things happened. Um, so the Hanafis say that you have to keep the fast, but if you were to break the fast because of exhaustion or tiredness, weariness, then you wouldn't be considered to be sinful. All you have to do is make up one fast. That's all. That's all it is. So if you try, you fast and then if you feel exhaustion, then you can break your fast. Um is trimming armpit and pubic hair permissible? Yes. Or does it have to be clean shaven? No, it can be trimmed as well. What is your opinion on moving to Dubai from Birmingham as a way of raising kids? I have no idea. I have never lived in Dubai. I've never even been to Dubai except Dubai Airport. So I would not be able to comment on that one, unfortunately. If there's anyone out there who can comment about living in Dubai and what it's like bringing up children there, then please help out, inshallah. In Witr Salah, a person is going from Qawma to Sajda, but accidentally says Assalamu, then instantly corrects to saying Allah. Is Witr intact or must No, it's fine. It's intact. Because they didn't intend. It was not a it was not a salam for ending the salat. It was just a mistake. <sighs> Plucking hurts though. Um so in fact, you know, I remember in Madrasa, yeah? like you know, students they used to you know remove their Facial hair and armpit hair. So one student, I remember one student, and he was like removing armpit hair with the with his fingers. And I said to him, "Whoa, how do you do that?" So he said, "Basically, I have been plucking for a very long time, and now the hairs have become so weak that with my fingers I can just pull them out." So you can use that. You can use a epilating machine. So you can get these machines, epilating machines that actually pull the hair at the roots. Um, those are quite good. Yeah, I use actually use epilating machine on my cheeks. Yeah, and sometimes for armpits as well. So that's something you can use. Or waxing is the other option. Or tweezers. So so these are options. If you find it difficult, then shaving is is fine. Seems as though in the Sahaba's days they must have used some sort of a, a tool that was a uh, removing it like that. Uh why is reading this commentary with the hadith important? For example, Riyadh Salihin. Um so the, the thing about hadith you have to remember is that hadith are considered to be statements without context behind it. Like we don't know what the whole story was behind this hadith. And sometimes a word, a st st sentence in a hadith might be misconstrued, might be taken out of context. That you might not know exactly. So this is why it's very important to understand what the early scholars understood about this hadith. Their understanding is better than ours. Right? So... 
So it's like, for example, imagine you have a book, a novel. And in this novel, I chose one chapter. And in that one chapter, I just took one line out. And I said to you, can, can you understand this whole chapter by me reading just one line? Most likely you can't. And that's a lot of times, that's what happens in hadith. right? So sometimes you might just read one hadith. To understand that hadith fully, you have to read 10 hadith, 20 other hadith to make sense of that one hadith. Now, obviously, if you're an expert, you would have that knowledge and then it becomes easier for you to be able to, to, to make sense of what's happening. Um, oh, curious cat. That's true. I'm going to check that. That's a good, good thing you reminded me. Okay, so let's have a look in Curious Cat in a bit. Let's try to knock out your, your questions here. Okay, so can laughing too much cause a loss of humility spiritually? What effect does laughing have? Um, possibly. Some of the scholars do say that, that laughing can have an effect on your heart. Too much laughing, as in over laughing. So laughing is obviously not haram. You're allowed to laugh. Sahaba laughed and the Prophet laughed as well. So it would be considered to be, I would say, like anything is too much eating has a spiritual impact on you. Too much sleeping has a spiritual impact on you. Yeah, too much talking has a spiritual impact. These kind of, these kind of that you can say, the animalistic traits that are found inside of humans, too much of them can have an impact on your spirituality. Uh, how to explain young Western teenagers to avoid haram relationships? Is nikah a good way to avoid it? Of course, nikah is a good way. The problem in the West is a lot of youngsters are too immature. And there's too many problems. Too, there's, there's many reasons for that. One main reason is mothers are just spoiling their sons yeah, and daughters. Mothers spoil their sons and daughters and they treat them you know, uh, like little kids all the way till they're 18, 19, 20. So it causes problems. That's one of the main reasons I would say. Others is because they're not given responsibilities in society and maybe, you know, having these kind of problems results in other things as well. Allah Alam. How to explain to young teenagers? So you can't just go to your young teenage children and say to them, right, today I'm teaching about Islam, right? Because they're going to think, what's this? You've never taught us about Islam before. So you need to start it from a young age with your practice, with your with you and your wife or your husband, you, you guys need to have practical Islam inside your lives. Praying regularly, having humility, having sabr, showing them, and all of these things, children pick it up. So these are the, the these I would say these are the probably the most important things people have to understand. Wa alaikum assalam, fresh prince, ahlan wa sahlan, habibana, ahlan wa sahlan. Amina, I just invested in gold. Gold prices touched all-time high last month. So advice I got was that it is a safe investment but doesn't offer high returns. Yeah, I think it's a safe investment in the sense that, you know, obviously money you know, is affected by inflation, but gold prices, you know, wherever you go, people are going to accept gold. Is there multiple types of riba? Yes. So there's two types of riba. One is called deferred riba and one is called surplus riba. Deferred riba is what the banks do. They borrow you money. They want the money back, but they want plus on top. And surplus riba is where you give, for example, like uh, um, gold in exchange for gold, but you on one side you give more than the other. So let's say you give 10 grams of gold for 5 grams of gold. That's called surplus riba. Surplus, because there's surplus on, on one side. Oh, by the way, did you guys manage to watch my vlog yesterday? That put up yesterday's vlog. The the trotters one. Slowly, as you can see, I'm starting to to get the hang of making vlogs and editing. Why are Mandi cultures considered toxic? What culture is that specifically? So I don't know, Aisha, if you've ever been working. I, I remember when I was a teenager, when I was in in. Uh, when I was in uh, school, they used to have something which is known as a work experience. So for two weeks in your last year, you had to find a place to have work experience before free of charge. You work for a company or an office or somewhere 
and then you get feedback and then this the, the idea was that it's supposed to give you an understanding of what the real world is about what do you want to go into after you finish school i got put into so one week i got put into this office where i was with computers and one week i got put into a factory yeah the factory that used to make these devices right um so as soon as i went into the factory and i went into one of these kind of rooms where we had the, these machines and all over the wall there was pictures of naked women like three, four foot posters of naked women all over there. And I was thinking, in them days I wasn't practicing, but still I felt I felt embarrassed that I have to walk into a room every day with these posters there. And then there was like everywhere you'd find like pictures of naked women. Basically they're, they're, it was very common for, ha for them objectifying women. This was in the 90s, this was. And then when they would talk to each other, they were like talking about pornography and talking about drinking alcohol and, so that's what I mean by toxic, in the sense that there's a lot of things in there which where men will just because you know their society is like that, the way they were brought up, that they 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 do these kind of things. You're welcome, Adam. Awareness, obstetrician. I don't even know what that is. Zakalna khair ana wa sahlan. SC1, alaikum salam. The vlogs are nice. I enjoyed the outdoors and nature parts. Mashallah, quality was also very good. The bike ride view part felt like a roller coaster. Yeah, that was a bit of a tricky one there. I was trying to see if I could make you guys immersed in the video so you guys. <laughs> Kanda, what is Surah Kahf about? So, my suggestion would be read it. I will give you a summary of what it's about, but read definitely. Honestly, Muslims have to read the Quran. I keep saying this to you guys, don't I? Muslims must read the Quran, Muslims must read the Quran because, one second guys, let me just put my watch on charge. So much is a bit low on charge. Honestly, you have to read Surah Kahf. It's not just what, what you, you don't want to know what the theme of it is. You want to know what each ayah is saying. That's very, very important. So Surah Kahf is very important and other surahs in the whole Quran is very important as well. So what is Surah Kahf about? Surah Kahf is about many things, many stories in the Quran. There's Surah Kahf. There's many advice Allah is giving in there. There's reminders in there. There's warnings in there. There's many things in there. But there's four main stories in there. One is the story of the people of the cave. One is a story of two men who had gardens and there was a dispute between them. And the, one was about the story of Musa, a, salam, a journey, a, a, a very unusual journey he made. And one is a story of a man called Dhul Qarnayn, who was a king that used to travel the land and establish justice in the land. So these are the four main stories. But besides that, there's also many other amazing things in that surah. T go to alaikum as -salam. Amina, moving anywhere from Birmingham is a very good idea. MashaAllah. Allah, Allah, Allah knows the answer to that. The small drops of semen after waking up require a ghusl or do I do ghusl after a full wet dream? So if you woke up and you have semen coming out, you must take a ghusl, take a bath. Um, if it's semen, okay. If it's if it's other, then no. Um, wa alaykum as -salam. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Ahlan wa sahlan. Um, why do madhahib differ? Don't they have access to the same? So what you need to study is, you need to watch my three-part series, I think I did mention to you before, Zor, about the history of madhabs. So it's not an easy answer. And also watch my evolution of fiqh. Series as well. Those will answer your question. Uh, and no, the, in, in a nutshell, the thing you have to remember is this, is that understanding the Quran, understanding the Hadith, everyone's got access to the same information. Yeah. But there's also lots of other ways that we look at information that can make us differ from how we see that information. Yeah. So, for example, like the example, imagine, like, for example, there is a, um, let's say there's a, a scholar. This scholar, or let's say it's a Sahabi. This Sahabi has heard the Prophet ﷺ himself with his own ears say, do this. And then there's another Sahabi who says to him, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say this. Now what happens now? Do you take the first one? Do you take the second one? Yeah, that's just one example. And this actually happened in an incident which I do mention, if you watch that, I mentioned that incident in the, in the videos. So it's not about the information being different, it's the information is the same, but it's how we understand. That's why I, I, I definitely encourage 
Anyone who is interested in understanding the history of madhabs, how madhabs function, do my 28 lessons of usul fiqh. Honestly, do that, and then you'll understand how it's not black and white. It's not black and white how we decipher information when it comes to ayats of the Quran and hadith. Are women meant to cover the feet in salah or in general? According to the Hanafi school, there is a difference of opinion. Yeah, one opinion says they're allowed to, other opinion says they're not. Stronger opinion is that they don't have to cover their feet. You're welcome, Aisha. Is surplus riba permissible? No. It's impermissible. If you want to know more about riba, I have actually in my Kuduri videos. I've got, a, if you Google it, type in Kuduri, uh, riba, uh, liaqat zaman, and you'll find, you'll find my video on there. I've explained in detail. Hayati, ashamed on building sites here. The women trades are pretty uh, bad. They sexualizing you, treat you unfairly. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's like it's like institutional racism. We have, we also have this kind of institutional uh, objectification of women. Sadly, it's a very bad thing. And that's why Islam came to eradicate. Islam came to put measures in to stop this from happening. And and in fact, there was actually a case like you've heard about the. The, the the Weinstein, yeah, that guy you know in America, the Hollywood, yeah, Weinstein case. And that was just a tip of the iceberg. You imagine how many other bad things were happening. Imagine Savile, Jimmy Savile, what he was doing with kids. Even there was like a toxic culture, even in the BBC, about this. And people would say like in the seventies and eighties was a normal thing for a man to grope a woman. Yeah, and obviously she would have felt embarrassed then, but she couldn't do anything. Uh, any good commentaries about Sunan al-Tirmidhi? Yes, uh, I would definitely recommend reading Ma'arif al-Sunan, Tuhfat al-Ahwadi. These are two that are accessible, very easy to read as well. Tuhfat al-Ahwadi is probably very easy to read. Ma'arif al-Sunan is a bit, might be slightly more difficult, but these are two very good ones. I've heard people talk about, and there's a new one that's come out um, by Mullah Abdul Mateen in, in Bangladesh. Right, it's a, it's apparently it's a really good one that's come out. Hopefully, I should be getting a hold of a copy. So far, I should be getting hold of a copy in a few weeks. I've heard people talk about creation before humans called Hin and Bin. Can you elaborate? So we don't. We there's nothing in Islam about that. As in the Islamic text, Quran says nothing about them. Authentic Hadith says nothing about them. This is just from historic records that many scholars have found from other societies. So Imam Ibn Kathir has mentioned them in, in Bidaya wa Nihaya. So sometimes what happens is a scholar might mention something, but it doesn't mean he got it from the Quran and Hadith. He could have got it from like another culture. Right? Obviously, he's not going to get something from another culture to explain something in Islam or to, to uh, sort of uh, give us some more some, some, some enrichment in our Islam. Now, obviously, our, our Islam is independent, it's rich. I don't know if this was answered, but is there different types of riba? Yes, there are. Does, yeah, answer that. Uh, does someone walking in front of you while praying invalidate your salah? No. Objectifying is literally seeing women as objects in a study on men. The same part of the brain lit up when seeing women as it did when they're shown a picture of power tools. Wow. Wa alaikum as my brother. I'm Jad Ilahi. Ahla wa sahlan. Can we use online free PDF version of books? I wouldn't see a problem with it. Uh, Ya'qub alaykum salam. How should one pray salah on the plane and does it have to be repeated after? So, there is a difference of opinion among scholars. If you're asking me, I would say you just pray. If you can stand, you stand. If you can't stand because no space or it's inconvenient, then you sit down and you pray sitting down. And there's no need to repeat it. Uh, young couple want to do nikah, but parents against it advise on what to do. So, my advice would be both couples should go to a scholar and speak to a scholar about this. Yeah, speak to a scholar, get everything out of the way Because sometimes what happens is Like, you know, I'll give you a little story of uh, of what happened There was a friend of mine, he deals with Nikas He said a 17-year-old guy, 17-year-old Pakistani guy Contacted him and said, Maulana, I need you to do my nikah. So he said, okay, uh, what, what do your parents say? He goes, oh, my parents don't, don't want me to I goes, okay, what about the girl? She goes, yeah, uh, she's 16 years old Yeah, listen this year He's 17, she's 16, she's a revert to Islam. How long has she been a revert to Islam for? She's a revert to Islam about six months. And 
and, and she's also pregnant. So you see what happens? Guys and girls, unfortunately, get into relationships before marriage. They Even before marriage, they're planning their whole life. And unfortunately, you know, families are not happy with this. Usually this kind of a this kind of a formula usually doesn't work. I've seen it myself. 80% of the time, 70-80% of the time, this does not work because it's built upon lust. It's built upon lust. That's all it is. It's just a, it's just a uh, you know the the coming together of two individuals just purely for lust purpose, and they're trying to make it halal. They don't realize there's is marriage is responsibility, it's a lifelong uh response, and if there's children involved, then there's more responsibility. Yeah, so so I would say if it's for that, then they should really go and speak to someone about this both together. And if it's if it's something where they are not involved in a haram relationship before marriage, then maybe they should get someone else involved to speak to their parents and get to them to see. And if the marriage doesn't work, then it doesn't work. That's it. How many people in the world have there been that have not got married? Yeah, think about it. How many people have there been that have not got married? They wanted to get married, but they didn't get married and they're still living their lives, still breathing. I wear patches for medication for an illness. Is this allowed in Ramadan? Inshallah, yes. Uh, Sheikh, if uh, you don't mind, why do some scholars? So some scholars say the Salat on the plane is repeated because they, they, they have a definition. They have a definition, those scholars, that sajda has to be done on the earth or something connected to the earth. That's their definition. But other scholars say, no, there's no way from Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu or from early early Hanafis that this definition is ever mentioned. That's the that's the main difference. Uh, sometimes I have a question and I search the answer on YouTube and ask him Hakim comes up, is it okay? To, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to say. I mean the kind of things that he's come out with before I would avoid him. And I've spoken to some people who are actually, well, who are from Saudi and they've said it's best to avoid. He's not really a scholar. A bit of a sensitive question. I was thinking about my future and the kids, etc. Is contraception permissible? Yes, contraception is permissible. Are those countries in English? No, they're in Arabic. What is the difference between Sunnah and Mustahab? What is the difference between Fard and Wise? So you need to study Usul Fiqh to understand this, my brother. Yeah, so this is, they require a long, a long explanation. It's not like something in two minutes I can explain. So I would definitely encourage you to do my. I'm, I'm selling my usul fiqh course here. The hadith about reading eighty salawat after us on Friday is a weak hadith. Yes, is it sunnah to comb wife's hair? I have no idea. I never come across that. What should be the correct dynamic between a younger sibling, and older sibling? I know someone who kind that of treat the youngest as servants. I don't know. You know, I mean. There's nothing in Islam to say how siblings should treat each other as long as they don't harm each other. That's the main thing. But different cultures would have different things. I've seen some cultures where the elder brother is seen like a father figure, is quite strict on the youngers, younger and expects them to do like what kids would do for their father. And I've seen some where they treat them at the same level. What do you guys say? I mean, with my, I'm, the, I'm uh, like uh, elder brother. So I've treated my younger, younger, siblings, younger siblings same as me. I mean, when I was young, probably I was a bit, I was a bit Firauni, But when a woman walks in front of a man praying salah, salah valid, yes. Should we keep the finger pointing after lowering the shahud? According to Hanafis, the early Hanafis did not have any mention about this. However, later Hanafis have mentioned that the finger should be lowered slightly because some narrations mention that when the Prophet in Surah in Surah Nasai is mentioned, the Prophet used to raise his finger, thumma wada'ahu. Yeah, he would lower it. So he lowered it a bit. So so, for example, things like that, you raise it and then just lower it a bit. So you don't you don't put it all, necessarily put it all the way down. Just lower it a bit. Uh, Patrick, ahla wa sahla wa alaykum as salam, my brother Patrick. Uh, Allah elevate your rank, Amin, and yours as well, and yours and your families as well, Amin. Going Umrah first time. Any tips, advice? Must see things. Best book sh uh, shop. Okay, so I do not know about the best things, but bookshops there. Because it was just hectic, packed out, packed out, and what I would say is this: if you're going to sal, if you're going to Umrah for the first time, then first of all, make sure you understand why you're going there. Yeah, your purpose there is connect with Allah in a way that you cannot connect anywhere else in the world. 
right? And it's very important when you go there to focus your time as much as you can in the masjid, especially Masjid al Haram. Yeah, you can go out in these places fine, but don't spend too much of your time away from the masjid. Try to do as many of the a'mal of the masjid as you can. I would definitely encourage you to do that. Um, and that would be like tawaf in Masjid al Haram, praying salat there, reading Quran there, yeah, reading any books you like there as well. It's totally fine. Do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there as well. So definitely I would say. And try to watch. There's a series on siblings of ilm. Yeah, siblings of ilm. It's a website, siblings of ilm. You go in there. And they've got a series on there on, on Umrah. It's a very good one. I've, I've skimmed through it. And it's a very nice one. So I would definitely encourage if you're going Umrah, watch that series. Yeah, definitely. Um, you were mentioning how marriage is a big responsibility. How can we really investigate a potential spouse in depth without being in a relationship? So, the thing is, how deep do you want to go? That's the thing. How deep do you need to go? Right? I would say you don't need to go deep. You just need to find out, is a family a good family? Is she someone who seems to be good? You will never know what a person is going to be like, even if you investigate them. Tell you, look at people in the West who have girlfriend and boyfriends. They live with each other for 10 years. Then they get married. And then like after five or six years, they get divorced. Look at that. They, you thought they knew each other really well. And then all of a sudden, bang. You know, it's like 50% divorce rate in the, in the UK. So the, the, the point is, is that marriage is something which you just have to look for the main things that you want in that person. And then just go for it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Aisha, are there any comments that are available translated into English? I have no idea. Um... Maybe if anyone knows any translations. Did he say meat in the US is halal because it's a Christian country? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really watch uh, Asim Hakim that much. Why is Salah valid when a woman walks in front of... Uh, why would it be invalid? Yeah, why would it be invalid? I've started listening to UIQ series besides learning the seerah and stories of the prophets. Is there anything else one should study to understand the context of verses of the Quran? Um, tafsir. Again, you know, you're probably going to say which one. I'm going to say to you, Malik al Quran. You're going to say it's too long, eight volumes. There's, there's no shortcut. The thing is, in Islam, there's like, there's no shortcut. And if you want to go deep into Islam, that's the, that's the, Bitter truth. Is siblings of Ilm a reliable source? Yes, mashallah. I know the, the guy who, who runs it, mashallah, is a very good friend of mine. Very good friend. I don't know, Huzayf Asali. He's the guy, you know, in Ramadan where you see those uh, in the morning at uh, Fajr time, those little uh, things going around, those little poster things, short ones, a little piece of advice on there. And WhatsApp. He's the one that does those. If you see a friend doing wrong, is it an obligation to advise? Even depends what wrong they're doing. If it's something categorically wrong in Islam, like drinking wine or fornicating, you have to tell them. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, ahla wa sahlan, my brother Junaid. Kayf halukum, ana saqeem al shafaq Allah. Al imtihanat. Al imtihanat. Amradatka. Uh, I like the hadith narrated by Hazrat Umar uh, I was reading articles on Yaqeen Institute and one was on Hudud. They mentioned Hiraba but not really in details. What exactly is it? Uh, and if it was implemented in history. history. Uh, so are you saying uh, like Ridda? People leaving Islam? Yeah, it was implemented. I've had a thought about love recently. Allah, go on, my brother. Tell us. If some, what's happened, Amma, about your Quran reading? You you don't have questions about Quran anymore. You stopped at Surah Nisa. And then khalas. If someone makes masa on normal socks, can we pray behind them also with it? I wouldn't see a problem, as long as they believe that their salat is valid. Also, will a witr prayer be valid if it's prayed behind a shafi according to the ahnaf? So there's a difference of opinion about this. I would say that there's no problem. Praying behind them wouldn't be a problem. I, oh Allah, make my secret better than apparent condition and make my apparent condition righteous. Ameen. Ameen. 
Well, I ask you for the righteous of what you give to the people of wealth, wives and children, not to be misguided and not misguiding. I mean, is playing a game where other players are non-mahram haram? Uh, like, in, like, can you give an example? There's an English one of Tirmidhi Sharif by Torah publishing. It's only on a chapter of two. Though. Oh, mashallah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, right. So let's go to Curious Cat. We found gold. We kept it for a year. Can I sell it in a shop and give the money to poor? Yes. Yes, you can. Can you just briefly go over the Farda prayers and is Witr compulsory? So uh, the Fard of prayers. So why I would suggest, why I would suggest is watch my uh, Uruk. One second, let me just. Uh, so okay, so the Fard of prayers. I will just say this like this because I assume you're watching. And I don't have time. The further prayers, Hanafi said there's six further pray, prayers inside your salat. Yeah? Takbir, standing up, reading Quran, doing ruku, doing sujood, and the last sitting of salat. Now, if you want to know more about this, watch my Kuduri video. In my Kuduri, I've explained this in Kuduri. Let me just try to find this video for you. Okay, so... Uh, Let's see if I can find. So I, I would, if you look, if you guys are interested in fic, I would definitely recommend for you guys to study a fic. Yeah, to study a fic text thoroughly, because that's basically what you guys want to do. Study with someone, get yourself familiar with it. Uh, okay, you're gonna have to go through. The fard in the fard. Hmm. I don't have to check. Okay, Miss Prayer is highly private. Acts in prayer. How much Quran? Which Quran in prayer? How much you pray with it? How? Uh, how do you pray? Okay, the obligatory acts of prayer. This is where it is. This is where it is. I was thinking I'm doing it somewhere. Yeah, and with it is, yeah, with it is necessary to read. I had to send some medication in the post to family for travel and wasn't sure if Royal Mail would make a fuss when they asked. What was inside? I said it was travel gift box because it was a gift mail, but I, I didn't want to lie. Is why I said the line. Oh, it's it's fine. Okay, uh, Muallim, I'm 29, 30. I'm 29, 13 December. Please make dua for me. Need to get married. Allah, guys, make dua for muallim. Muallim is looking for a zawja. You're looking for a muallima or a taliba. Yeah, may Allah, may Allah. So I actually got. So this is this is look. Uh, someone reached out to me. They sent me their CV. It's a lady, and they're looking for someone to obviously a, a possible person that they can uh, look into about for marriage. 36 years old, yeah, lady is 36 years old, has not been married um, from Bangladeshi background around London. So if there's any guy who is serious about it and is not going to mess around, yeah, then they can email me and then I can forward the details to them. Yeah, so if there's someone who is serious, looking, someone looking for a, a wife that's about 36 years old or so, then because a lot of you guys have asked me in the past. I thought, you know what, I'd uh, reach out and see if there's, there's anyone. Okay, and there's other people who have asked me as well. So, so from other backgrounds as well. 
yeah so someone asked me for for someone a ladies asked for someone background who is uh from afghanistan area looking for a man from afghanistan area and there's a guy that's also asked as well um i think he's asking around about 30 early 30 i need to become a shadi.com okay I bought some shirts. They were too big and color too bright. So I washed them hoping they shrink, but they didn't. Return conditions say not to have been washed. Is it okay for me to? Uh, so as long as if they... Oh, it's happened. So if they accept it, then it's fine. So if, they, if they're going to accept it, then it's fine. It wouldn't be a problem. Is Shab e Miraj 27th Rajab and do we fast on this day? Uh, we don't have authentic, we don't have authentic reports about what day, what day it's on. It's date. Uh, fasting isn't prescribed. Yeah, fasting is not prescribed for that day. Can a woman travel without a mahram? Uh, only if the journey is, is needed and is very safe. So my father has been lis listening to Shia content for decades now and he fully believes that Shiaism is the truth. I've tried talking to him sometimes about the beliefs of the Shias, but he never listens. How do I explain to him that Shias are really... So if he's been listening to decades, how are you going to explain it to him in one or two days? Yeah, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Wassalam. My advice is to try to get someone to speak to him. Yeah, someone knowledgeable, get someone knowledgeable to speak to him. That's the best way. There's, there's, there's a guy, if you're saying decades, he's been listening to. You're not going to remove decades of exposure with just a few minutes of, of you know, blasting. Okay. Um, Sahiya Ustad, alhamdulillah, intihanat, kanat jayida jidda, alhamdulillah. Do you think today's rising divorce is due to people not tolerating forms of abuse or is it due to our impatient state? Uh, there's many reasons. There are very many reasons. And, and you know, I've, I was speaking to someone, and one of the main reasons is financial issues. It's that there's a totally different mindset with uh, youngsters growing up in the in the West. Um, you know, things like, for example, the woman wants a career. She wants to work herself. She doesn't want to stay at home all day. Um, the man, he's, uh, you know, too immature sometimes. The man wants to stay with his parents. He doesn't want to move out. There's like lots of there's lots of issues. I'm not really kind of obviously expert in this field, but I've heard that you know there's there's quite a few issues. One of the main ones is that there too much expectations, and they they just you know they 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 just want to get out the marriage. That's it. They feel as though they can get out the marriage. So so it's it's one of those kind of. I think in the past people were more tolerating. What dua can I read for past my driving test? Allah knows best. I don't know. There's nothing in the Quran. There's nothing in the Hadith about what the arteries. I wouldn't be able to tell you. Inshallah, read Surah. Try to read Surah Yasin in the morning before your exam. And make a lot of dua to Allah. Sorry, it's a very good point. I need to pick up the Quran reading. I get uh, distracted reading, listening things. We it. You're welcome, my brother. Like online video games, other players who play with you are non-mahram. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't see as long as there's no kind of like uh, flirting interaction that kind of thing going on. I wouldn't see it. Hirab, I think, was translated as spreading corruption in society, but that sounded really vague. And if it's like treason, yeah. So Hiraba translated as treason, that would be fine. So treason is is the death penalty for treason in many countries today. 
Salam, ahlan wa sahlan. I'm a sister 20. I'm starting thinking about marriage, but I don't know how to talk about this to my father. I'm at uni now. He wants me to pursue a career and I don't see myself working for long. Um, so this is honestly, this is like a very common thing now. If for some reason, like parents, especially for example, Asian parents, yeah, they, they've got this thing in their mindset that their children have to become like certain doctors or something and they don't realize that that child has, that youngster, that young adult has a lot of desires inside themselves. And that is the best time for a person to get married. In the early 20s now would probably be the best time for you know fertility purpose for reasons and to bond with the husband as well. It's probably the best time to get married. Youngsters getting married, this young adults is very good, I would say, especially if they're mature. What I would suggest is maybe, so you got to do two things. Number one is you have to take the step because you might be very shy of speaking to your parents about this. Really shy. It's very hard for you. Take the co- the step. Get some courage. And just present it to them. Yeah. Secondly is try to get someone else involved to speak to them. Convince them. Because sometimes your parents might be thinking it's coming from you. And you don't know much. You're a little kid. If you get someone else involved, they can make them understand. So for example, you know, maybe if your dad is going to a particular mosque. You can contact the imam and say, look, you know, maybe you can give a talk on marriage and this and that. Maybe the imam can speak to. It's going to be difficult for you, sister. It's going to be, honestly, it's going to be difficult for you. You're going to have to bite the bullet and just go for it. Nadim, when giving charity or doing charity, we should not expect something in return in a fame, money, etc. But can we ask for, expect someone to make dua? Of course, inshallah. In later stages of alim courses, are classes conducted in Arabic? Some places they are, some places they're not. Is the aim of Arabic for the purpose of understanding and accessing texts? Or do students also learn speaking skills? Primarily, it's comprehension. So understanding the texts. That's what it's mainly for. It's a, it's a text-based, um, you can say, endeavor. I.e. helping someone, hoping gain rewards. I also paused Quran translation reading to listen to Sirah and stories of the Prophet so I understand more. When I read, although, could this be considered a distraction? Um, it, I mean, if you're doing it to understand the seerah, it's fine. Okay, that's fine because you're obviously, you know, complementing the Quran. So definitely, I would say it would be a good thing. There's nothing negative in there. See, it's, it's a good alternative source for study for those wanting to have a foundation in the deen but don't have a means time. I'm considering listening to Noah Ali Khan's Divine Speech course. Could you recommend a... I have no idea. I don't. I, I've met him a few times. I haven't listened to his talks. I don't want to. I don't want to kind of promote someone that I don't really kind of uh, listen to a lot. Uh, I've heard many good things about his talks. That's what I can say. I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about his talks. Does preceding the imam invalidate the salat? Yes. If your feet go ahead, so imagine this is the foot of the imam, and your foot is there. It goes fully ahead there. Then your salat will become void. Rona wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan. Very well. Thank you very much, my brother. How are you? Please clarify. Is Isha prayer 17 rakat? And so Isha rakat is salat is four rakats of fard and then two sunnah and then three witr. That's the main. And then everything besides that is nafil. So those are the rakats. One of the, the word for love comes from hub, meaning seed. So love at first sight is usually lust at first sight knowing someone makes a lot ajeeb lust at first sight mm. no I, I would disagree there because it depends how you define lust isn't it if you define lust by just some sort of physical attraction then maybe but if your definition of lust is something which is more to do with sexual yeah because you could have hub between parents yeah you could love Allah, hub of Allah, you have hub of Rasul. There's no lust there. A tree begins a seed and must survive heavy storms, dry heat. But I like that seed analogy. What do you think are the main reasons for divorce in our community? Or do you think that? I think the main reasons for divorce, which I've seen, is this. I think people, they have too many high expectations. Men have too many high expectations. Women have too many high expectations. Yeah. So, for example... A man falls in love with a woman that looks nice and he expects her to look like that all the way throughout his marriage. 
and have the same dedication and focus and concentration on that, which he's not going to get. So that fades away over time. He loses interest in her because her looks are now becoming normal. So I think that's one of the things. The women, it's like they have these high expectations of the man. This man is supposed to be like this. He's supposed to be like this. He's supposed to always kind of text me. How are you? Everything okay? Are you this? Are you that? And if you look at your parents, your parents hardly ever text each other. Hardly ever call each other. Because marriage is supposed to just be like, like the, the, the old days. was Families were were basically deciding where two people are going to you know, get married to. So one family, you just meet some other family, says, right, I got a son, I got a daughter, right, let's put them together. And then they'll meet each other. If they're happy, that's it, go through. And then usually that works because the idea was you're bringing families together and cultures are coming together and it's about building a family. So you're, you're starting ground up, you're going ground up. Now, if you have expectations from before, it's like you built all this massive, beautiful palace. And then when you get into the marriage, you go, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect that you're going to be going work all day and coming back exhausted and you're going to have time for me. I didn't expect you want me to cook for you. Or he's going to say, I didn't expect you to want me to, you know, uh, send you love hearts all the time. So these are, these are these kind of things that affect. Yeah, and then what if he says, I want another wife? She'll say, oh, I didn't, I didn't expect you to want another wife. I thought it was just me. So there's like a lot of things, I think, in that kind of area. Then you have financial issues. Financial issues pay a big burden. Uh, you have to remember, you got bills to pay. You're going to get married to someone and he's going to have to pay the bills. That's his obligation. Now, if he turns around and says, I want you to pay the bills as well. Yeah, do this. Or maybe he's a stingy guy, right? And he doesn't like people using his money. Maybe he doesn't want to buy her what she wants. Maybe she's used to going out all the time with her mates. And he doesn't want her to go out with the mates. There's a lot of these kind of things. So there's, there's, there's these kind of problems that we have. All of this strengthens the roots, which then turns into the stem and then grows, solidifies over time. After all that, it becomes... I, I, you know, I heard... And this is, I haven't listened to it, but I heard from one of my students. He listened to Dr. Yasir Qadi's course on love. I think he, he, he had a course at Maghrib Institute many years ago. And in there, he was saying that he was going through like a whole how love changes in a marriage. Yeah. So, you know, why at the end, your parents, your grandparents will just live with each other. They have this love between each other, but you can't see that love. So though you can watch them all day, you won't see any sort of like glimpses of love between them, except maybe a little few things that they might say to each other. And he was saying this is true with hormones as well. So when people first get married, their hormones are all over the place. That's why they're so excited about each other. And then usually, you know, the older you get, the hormones start to slow down. Sometimes young people with hormones still be a bit active. And then when kids come onto the scene, it's like the, 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 the parents are not interested in each other anymore as much as they are in the kids now. It's more about the kids. And they start to lose interest about each other. Uh, okay. After all that, it becomes beneficial to others, bearing fruit. Providing shade and even housing. Do we? I like that seed idea, though. Do we? What worship looked like? Do we know what was before the Prophet's Salam time? Was their prayer similar to the five daily prayers in the other nations? Yeah. So some, like some, some of them say they have three prayers. Like if you look at what the Jews and Christians are doing, pretty much that's what they used to do. But are you saying like the original true teachings? So you have some glimpses into it. I don't think uh, we have like authentic. So it's just historical reports of how they used to pray. Marriage Bureau, the catch line will be, you be the khabar, someone's mubtada. All right. Like LZ, marriage, X, 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 or X, one X, no, three X. And then be like underneath, like a, like a tarkib, mubtada and khabar. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Mubtada, if the Mubtada is Mubtada, the Khabar has to be Mubtada. So it doesn't work with Mubtada Khabar. Yeah, if the Mubtada is feminine, then the Khabar has to be feminine as well. So it doesn't work there. Um, what are the steps for a Muslim to find a spouse in the West? Are Muslim dating apps a way to go? I don't know. Has anyone got any, any tips that can help Rona? How should a man behave when working in a mixed working environment, just like you would behave with non-Muslims? 
How would you behave professionally with non-Muslims? That's how you behave with with uh, women or Muslim women. You treat them well, you respect them, you do your job. Shaykh, why did Imam Bukhari not mention any hadith which supports Ahnaf? He has many, there's many hadith that support Ahnaf. Interestingly, Muslim women, even in uh, Muslim countries where Hanafi is the main background, many women travel without mahram. Why are we in the UK more concerned about these matters? Uh, I haven't done a survey of Muslim countries to say that. I mean, if you've got information on that, then that's another issue. True uh, Striver, Salam brother, please, how can I advise family member who is involved in gambling? Um, you need to try to get either you speak to them or you get someone else to seriously speak to them. Yeah, and yeah, and you know, if you if you have to as last resort expose them so they stop, you might have to do that. Because gambling and drug addictions can be very, very you know, de- not lethal, but detrimental to a person's iman and to the family as well. Can social media serve as a continuing charity when the person passes? Uh, of course, inshallah. Anything a person says and stays behind and people take benefit from it is a sadaqah jariya. Salam ala wa sahlan zob. Can I eat oysters and crabs and mussels and things? According to Hanafis, no. But if you're a bit of a loose Hanafi, then I w- uh, it would be like prawns then. So if you eat prawns, then I wouldn't see it. Any different if someone recites the root in first tashahud is such the sahu necessary? Yes, if it is, how come? Because the Hanafi say that a delay of one fard, so after tashahud, you're supposed to stand straight up. That standing is immediate after the shahud. By you adding the root sharif, what you've done is you created a delay between tashahud and between standing. If marriage can complete half of the deen, then can we say that the wrong person can destroy half of the deen? That's a good one, that is. Never thought about that. That sounds really good. I might use that in my bayans. I once read Isha near my granddad, and after finishing, he told me I have to read Witr Amma, or my Isha is incomplete. Is this true? Does this conflict with the... Uh... So the Hanafis say, basically, Abu Hanifa says Witr is considered wajib. So all the salats are considered like a pack. So you, your fard salat would be done, but your witr would be would be still be wanting. Yeah, that's why and if you look at hadith, the sahaba say if we missed our witr at night time, we'd pray it before fajr. We'd pray it at fajr time if we missed it. If we did qadabi basically. Is it permissible to name a son Barelvi? No, yes, you can. Those branches can become strangulation and cruel. Yeah, that's a good one. Kind of toxic branches there. Okay, I'm going to go off uh, Instagram. If you want to join, continue. Then come on so YouTube, guys. Okay, so let me just put this. Phone on charge. Uh, this is the problem of live streaming from your phone. Battery. Okay, what should uh, we do if someone calls you a deal bandit? <laughs> it's, like, it's a funny name. Can Juma be prayed in school, Musalla? Um, so, as long as the people in the school have access to it, and it's not restricted only to one class, then I wouldn't see a problem. Inshallah, I'll try to speak to my dad about marriage, but if I fail, can you contact him? We have a strong relationship, and I don't want to ruin it. Uh, I don't see it. The thing is, I don't know your dad. I would say it's best for you to contact someone that knows your dad. Yeah, best for you to contact someone that knows your dad. I don't know you as well, that's the thing, personally. So I would say the best thing to do is contact someone who knows your dad, tell them to speak. I have heard uh, some people being doubtful of involving themselves in matchmaking or sharing contacts in case of being pulled into. Yeah, I know. I've, I've experienced that as well. Where sometimes like someone said to me, ah, oh, but you said he was a good guy. And he turned out like this. 
And I'm thinking, so I, I always put like a like a disclaimer now when someone comes to me for Rishta, I always put a disclaimer and say, look, I don't know how she is, I don't know how he is, right? But from from them being my students, for example, they're very good students. Yeah, so you know, you gotta be you gotta put that disclaimer out there nowadays. Do you think Braille and the Ubundis will unite creating a transformer or superpower? Braille <laughs> Like uh, Power Rangers, huh? Um, that's really interesting. Is loving non Muslim, non Mahram, non Muslims considered a psychological disease? I don't know. I'm not a psychologist to be able to say that. Uh, so are there any teachings or rulings of Islam which on the surface sound unfair or unjust to you and you can't understand the wisdom behind them but as a Muslim you say yes you can get that yeah, I, I'll give you an example like for example when Umar who when the treaty of Hudaybiyah was signed and the prophet agreed to it parts of that treaty were clearly unfair it was one-sided it was in favor of the people of Mecca Umar went to the prophet and said oh messenger of Allah are we not on the truth are our dead not going Jannah and their dead going Jahannam? Why do we have to lower ourselves to signing these kind of like agreeing to this? So the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't say anything. Then he went to Abu Bakr and I told Abu Bakr. Later on, Umar found out that there was so much wisdom in there. Like it was about a year or so later when he found out how much it benefited the Muslims. So there can be rulings like this. You might think, why is this like this for? And Is there such a thing as a Shari Masjid and does this differ to what we regularly refer to as a Masjid? Yeah, Shari Masjid is basically the area that is the Masjid, the official Masjid where people pray. The rest of the building is not considered to be the official Masjid. It's called just, it's just a building. And usually the people, the committee define what a Shari Masjid is. You have to ask them in the documents they'll have. What's the definition of an intoxicant according to the Sharia? Intoxicant is something which basically takes you out of your senses. Yeah, makes you unable to be able to make sound judgments. The love between parents is mawadda, which is affection type of love. I was talking about people who got out on dates and ah, oh, I see, I see. Uh, you asked, I delivered. Uh, hold on, what will they do when we bring a witness from each community with uh, you, Muhammad, as a witness against? These people who is being referred to. So this is a day of judgment, basically. Uh, as in, what is gonna happen on that day when we bring a witness from each community? Uh, every community they're gonna have a witness that's gonna testify. Like the community is gonna come in front of the angels and Allah, and and a person will come from each community and say, I have passed on the message to them. So the idea is, is that in the dunya, when we give da'wah, oh, by the way, I've got a da'wah course this week in Ashton University. It's about a one hour, two hour course on da'wah. So I've been like preparing for that today. With my seerah in the lens of the Quran as well, by the way, guys. On the 2nd of March, seerah from the lens of the Quran, through the lens of the Quran. It's going to be seerah course from the ayats of the Quran, inshallah. So that's what it basically means. On the day of judgment, so when, we, when the, the prophets came and gave da'wah to the people, they gave it even if they were not like successful in the world in the sense that the people didn't accept. At least that messenger, the prophet, is going to tell the people on the Day of Judgment, I give testimony that I passed on the message. So they, they, they won't have any leg to stand on on the Day of Judgment in the court. Will you be the mudah to someone? Ah, mudah, 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 mudah is a good one. Yeah, that makes more sense. If a person is strong in their worship but lacks respect to their parents, does that mean their worship is over, override? No, worship is separate. Like one act of worship doesn't necessarily affect another act of worship. They're independent acts there. Wa alaikum as my brother Rayhan. Ahla wa sahlan. Ustad, could you give us a tea or coffee recipe for energy? Tea or coffee recipe for energy? So what I usually use is something called, uh, it's called salajit or shalajit. Some people call it shalajit or salajit. You can buy it online. It's like this black tarry substance. You take a little bit the size of like a, you know, a grain of rice. It's quite hard to pull off. And you put it in warm water and you drink it with your tea or anything. It's got a bit of a taste to it. Drink that and it gives you a lot of energy. 
Yeah, it keeps gives gives you focus as well. But you you shouldn't take too much of it. Just take it for a few days and stop, and then give it like a week break, and then take it again. A L M alaikum assalam and wasan. Are there old Balagha texts like Muhtasal Ma'ani overrated in current day? I see people who studied it say that but your Balagha is excellent. So the thing I think people need to understand is you know any science that you study in Islam, any science, whether it's Nahu, whether it's Sarf, these are sciences you want to gain a skill at the end of it. The the skill that you want to gain, like for example, Balagha, the whole point of it has been designed so that you can understand the 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 layout of the Arabic in the Quran. Like how the sentences are structured, why this word comes before this word, and how does it affect the translation. Right. So this is known as Ilm al Balagha, yeah. So every language has it. It's just a, a natural way of the language expressing itself in various ways. You see it in poems, you see it in the lyrics of songs and other things. So the, 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 then what happens is the scholars begin to delve into the science and they academify it, right? So they make it academic and they want to break it down. They want to define it and they want to come out, like make it into branches. That's where you're going to have scholars differing on things. Yeah, so this is why uh, Mukhtasal Ma'ani, I would say better than study, study Abdul Qahir Jurjani's works. Yeah. Ijazul uh, Balagha and Zamakhshari's uh, works. Mukhtasal Ma'ani, you can study that later. Mukhtasal Ma'ani is more like nuances of the of the text, trying to understand the text and break down the text and ikhtilaf in the text. That's what it is. So it's not really a necessary text to study. Jazakallah khair, ALM. Uh, anyone interested in studying Balagha, I would definitely recommend my two courses on Balagha. Yeah, definitely recommend because obviously I'm recommending and they're my courses. But also it's because the courses I've designed them, I, I, I can't remember how many, I think about over 40 books I used to actually design that book or the course, two courses. And it's dedicated to Quran only, just extracting the Balagha from the Quran. I mean, the online one is not really something uh, as 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 good as I would say, but it's not as effective as the one that I teach on site. On the one I teach on site to students, right, is more effective. I might, I'm thinking, I might uh, redo the balaga again. So I might do like a live one um, and redo the balaga again because I think uh, I need to train people up in balaga. So watching pre recorded videos is good. You learn a lot from there. But if I can train people up in balaga, that would be excellent. Sadaq Jari for myself as well. Train people up, and, and in there I use a lot of sort of like exercises, get them to do exercises and things. A word Allah used for love between spouses, mawadda. Yeah, mawadda. So, what's your morning routine? My morning routine, you will find that in my vlogs, inshallah. Yeah, morning routine, I go work, depending on what day it is, I go work and then come back from work. Then I'll do some mutala, do my reading. Any projects I have, I do those, I do make my videos, then I go work in the evening again, and I come back and I do reading. That's pretty much my mundane day. As reverts don't have anyone to travel with us, we just have to carry on like strong independent women. We are fast grad. <laughs> That's a good one. Excellent, excellent. Like that. Is Ibn Taymiyyah's position on triple talaq a valid opinion? Does it fall outside the scope of valid opinions? Um, it's outside of the four hubs. Does it go outside of the scope? I don't know. I mean, some Hanafis, for example, like a Sheikh, um, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name now. Abu Shibil Ahmed Shakir. Yeah, so he he has actually written a whole treatise on this and he, he takes that view. That three to last count is one. But Sheikh Zayed Kothri did a, did a rebuttal against him on that. So I don't really know, I mean, I don't really know to what extent, I haven't really kind of looked into this masala to be able to say if there's any other contemporary Hanafis that agree with. How to absorb books? Uh, how to absorb books, I would say, there's two things that I find very beneficial. Number one is writing. So when you read a book, make sure you make notes on important points. Don't make notes on everything, but important points in the book, make sure you make notes on it. And then reread your notes. 
Secondly is make sure when you're reading a book, make sure you have a purpose for reading the book. Always ask yourself, why am I reading this book for? And, and, and write down for yourself a, a practical purpose. Like for example, let's say you're reading the Quran and your purpose is in the Quran, I want to know every, every statement a prophet made. Let's say for example, so you say my aim is now to read the Quran and I want to find in the Quran every statement a prophet made. So you write that down. Every statement a prophet made. And that's your aim now. You're going to start from the beginning. Every time you come across something Musa alayhi salam said, write it down. Okay, this is the ayah number. Every time, by writing all this, what happens is, it gives you, sorry, by, by, by making yourself a, like an objective, you give yourself purpose. When you give yourself purpose, you feel energized, you feel motivated to, to read. Is it correct too that the Prophet sallam said, Iman is like a roller coaster? No, you can't say that. You can't say he said, because he never said that. Uh, some Jews distort the meaning of revealed words. They say we hear and disobey. Were these Jews that knew the Prophet some knew the Prophet was true? Yeah, they were them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so this is what I'm going to be explaining in the Sira course. This whole issue about the Jews and Christians in Madi. How does the Quran present this, 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 this community and the various? Layers of this community as well Because they're not all the same They're just like not all Muslims are the same So what these people had begun to do Is they began to basically Take the text that, that were, they, were, they were They were um, They were Told to preserve And they began to Interpret it in ways that suited them That was the Distortion that they created Start. how do you handle Misbehaving students um, so the misbehaving, so we only teach adults, right? So teaching adults, is, is we have a, a, a system of what, how they have to go. So if they make a certain type of, you know, if they do something wrong, then they go to one teacher and then under the final teacher, uh, they come to. So we have like a policy, we write down what they've done, make a note of it. And then if they're young, we call in their parents, they're like 16, 20 years old, we call their parents in. We have a meeting with them. Um, so it's basically like a college Like what happens in college Is one of the reasons of Salah Keep an individual occupied from doing sin What is the wisdom behind Salah So the wisdom behind Salah is remembering Allah like You're probably saying But I can remember Allah just sitting on a chair No, see Remembering Allah Has an impact on you in different ways Sitting in a bayan is remembering Allah But the impact that sitting in a bayan has Is different from sitting down and saying subhanallah a hundred times. Yeah. And praying salah has an impact on you that is different from reading the Quran. And doing tawaf has a dhikr of Allah impact on you different. So dhikr of Allah is like an umbrella term. And all these have different impacts. What are your thoughts on Shaykh? What do you like to see from your students? I like my students to show me that they have understood what I've taught them. They can demonstrate what I've told them. That makes me ha more than happy. What are your thoughts on Sheikh Faraz Abani? What about Seal's guidance? Yes, mashallah. A very competent scholar. Uh, yeah, mashallah. He's very competent. He studied in Jordan. I think he studied, I, I think he studied in Pakistan for a little while. I'm not sure. sure. But he studied in Jordan. Uh, Tanweer, wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan, my brother. Is even has a reliable technology from. Uh, not for the average person, no. Because there's a lot of things he said that are really problematic. How do you do tahniq with the baby? So you basically get date, chew it, and then get your finger, and then the kind of uh, the, the chewed up piece of the date, you rub your finger in it, and then you get that finger that's got some moist date on there, and then you put it inside the baby's mouth, and you press it against the palate slightly, and then you take it out. What are the signs of people involved in doing or are they not clear? What are signs of people involved with doing or are they not clear signs? I don't know idea what you're asking. Some people say it's unsafe. Also, it's better to use dates or honey for tahnik. Yeah, so dates is what the Prophet ﷺ used. What is your opinion on pirated software? I would say if it's for personal use and it's quite expensive and you can't afford it, then it's then I want to see a problem. But if it's if it's cheap, it's something you can get, then I would say buy it. And for selling it off to others, then no. 
So the why did sometimes the Sahaba stay silent when the Prophet ordered them to do something? For various reasons. Maybe they were sad. Maybe they un understood the Prophet didn't mean it as a command. He meant it as some some just personal advice. People, what are the signs of people involved in sihr? I don't know. Usually, I mean, I'm not into sihr, these kind of things. I'm not an expert in that. I haven't trained in that and haven't done anything in that. Uh, but I assume, I don't know, maybe there's like some sort of uh, un unknown illness that they've got, which can't be explained medically. Uh, in hunting, must the hunter recite Bismillah before pulling the trigger? Yes. If they don't, then it renders the animal haram. Also, is there anything wrong with hunting trophies, prepping a buck, a hit head or something and sticking it to your wall? Uh, if it's an animal, so the animal should not be killed. The Prophet he prohibited killing animals just for target practice. But if there's a purpose for it, like training someone up and it's like killing an animal that is not going to be eaten like a wild boar, I wouldn't see a problem. Well, so I meant, have you personally come across any such rulings? I remember what you asked now. Is that which to intoxicates in a large amount haram to even take in a small amount? E.g. weed, what's the ruling on vaping? Uh, yes, according to Imam Abu Yusuf, rahimahullah, yes, it would not be allowed. What's the ruling on vaping? Vaping, I mean, again, uh, it depends, isn't it? It's like, if it's harmful to your body, ask your doctor, basically. Go to your doctor, ask your doctor. Is it harmful to me? If they say yes, it's harmful to you, then... Don't take it. Is it better to pay off debts or go Hajj and Umrah pay off debts? So the what time is the Dawah course? Or what day? I think it's only for students. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday. I think about 2 o'clock. Is it possible? You, if, you, if you contact the Aston Isaac, ask them. Is it possible that worship could go overboard? Meaning if a person is sick or dying and he still wants to perform wudu and stand in Salah. No, he can. It's fine. He won't be sinful. Hakim alaykum sir. What are the best ways of sadaqa jariya for your parents? Um, I don't know. It's a very hard question. There's many, many things you can do. If you ask me what are the ways of sadaqa jariya for your parents, is you can build a well for them in a poor country. You can give out Qurans. You can spend money on a, building a mosque or a madrasa. You can build homes for the poor. You can, uh, yeah, anything which is going to bring, it's going to stay and it's going to bring benefit for someone. Should one leave his alimia because he starts feeling interested in the f his female teacher? Uh, yes. If a person is sexually becoming aroused, they should maybe speak to that he doesn't want to attend those lessons. Uh, because then, obviously, studying knowledge is mustahab. Saving yourself from sin is necessary for it. Please explain how can a lay person navigate Aqidah groups like Ashari, Maturidi and Asari? Are all parts, all of them are Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah, all of them. Whichever you are inclined towards, go for it. Naheed, wa alaykum wa Shaykh, we want a day in the life, in the life, inshallah, my brother, inshallah. Uh, Ustaz, I, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about doing, doing that as well. Uh, Mubin or Rahman, Ustad, who knows some who knows some books? Who know some books mentioned like Karaha in marriage? Are these still relevant in these days? Karaha Kara in marriage. Karaha, I don't understand. If you can explain, give some examples. Is it permissible to buy non halal cat food? I heard for imams. Uh, say it's not so technically it's not you should look for alternatives if there's no alternatives i would say as a last resort you can buy them why would women follow the jal i don't know do we know the hikmah behind why the quran was revealed in arabic of all languages so i think the answer to that is very very easy which is arabic language i don't think you've studied arabic language so but the arabic language is a very versatile language yeah and it's it's it will, it's Existence 1,500 years ago was perfect to explain Allah's message. Uh, and it, did all prophets speak Arabic? No. No, most of them didn't. 
Are there any ethical rulings in regards to removing a tree in the garden? Mm, just cut it down, my brother. Bismillah, cut. Can we pray salah at home? We just be, sometimes they say be careful that jinn are not residing on that tree. Can we pray salah at home if it isn't allowed to pray in public or school in the country? And would it be necessary to migrate? Yes, you can pray at home. Be necessary to migrate to a place where you can pray. No, it wouldn't be necessary. Sometimes the repetitive mundane daily routine is the best and missed when things change. I re read how a Palestinian woman was missing her old daily routines of studying cooking. Yeah, interesting. I think some people, especially people who have like uh, some some level of autism as well. Because they say everyone has autism. But it's just yeah. depending where you are on the spectrum. So people who really like routines, who get frustrated if their routine has been spoiled, they say they have slight autism. They have slight autism. Um, and then people who have, obviously, people who have a, a high level of autism, you know, they, 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 they have to have their routine. Otherwise, they feel, they feel uh, disorientated. If a person grows his hair long with the intention of following the Prophet is, it, is that rewarding? Inshallah. The Prophet ties his hair back. We have no record of him tying it back like a ponytail. But having it like not plaited, that's reported. Imam Ghazali has a book on the mysteries of prayer in his hair. Yeah. Can we whistle in schools, Mudassas? Uh, yes. I didn't hear the answer to this. Does preceding the Imam? Yes, in Valdez of Salat. If, there are a, if there's a reward for conducting the Fard of Salah, such as the compulsory prayers, is there an actual reward stated or for these? Is there a reward for conducting the Fard of Islam? So yes, because in the Quran, Allah has a general rule. Man ja'a bil hasana, whoever brings any good deed gets ten times more. I was told Sheikh Faraz is a Brelvi. Have you heard? And if he is a Brelvi, so? What's wrong? The thing is, is that Sheikh Faraz, from my knowledge, has studied in Jordan predominantly under under many of the Jordan mashiukh. So I, I don't know what defines a person as Brelvi. That's the thing. I don't know what, what, what defines them. One of the things he mentioned is that when you lift your hands to begin Salat, it is as the as if you are pushing the dunya. Ah, right. One of those ones, yeah. Is rejecting a gift out of sinful? No, it's not. When going from Medina to an airport in Jeddah, does one have to perform another Umrah as passing through Miqat? Um, so here I would say no, because it's considered to be a haraj issue and you're not going with the intention, because you're not going into the haram. Yeah, you're not going into the haram. You're not going for Umrah. You're just passing through, so it wouldn't be a problem. Have you seen a rukya take place? Yes, I've actually done a rukya, and it's quite dangerous. Do you follow a tariqa? No, my tariqa is just a tariqa of of uh, liaqat. Is loving non-Muslim neighbors permissible? Yes. Does a haida make niya in the plane for ihram when passing over miqat? Yes. When does she pray the two nafal? So is the two nafal is nafal. It's not necessary to do. Um, so she just has to make intention before miqat. Do Dawat Islamic wear green because they are healthy? <laughs> Vegan berries. Sorry for the silly questions. I have been bored. Oh, you're in hospital. Shafaakallah. Why, why are you there for? What's the, what's the reason? Who are the three of your favorite scholars from the Hanafi Madhab? Abu Hanifa. Abu Yusuf and Muhammad. Is there leftover of raw meat? If there's left raw meat that you personally don't eat, like this, the skin and fat. I love skin. I love fat. Oh, come on, my brother. I love skin and I love fat, especially barbecued. But the meat itself was halal. Can you give that to a cat? Yes. Kafa'a oh, kafa'a in marriage, lineage, occupation. So what was your question? I don't even know what your question was. Uh, so Imam Qasim ibn Qutlu Bugha has actually written about this and says it's no longer this isn't, this isn't like in the in the 800s that is, in 900s it's like no longer something which is relevant anymore in most places Shaykh how would you answer why men are allowed to marry Ahl Kitab women but women cannot marry Ahl Kitab men and the reason is because the whole structure of society of a family unit is based upon the man usually the man usually has 
a strong influence on the religion of the children. If the father is an atheist, he will have the atheist influence on the children. If the father is a practicing Muslim, he's going to have an influence. Women are usually tabi of the husband. This is usually, and sometimes a woman might be strong, but usually that's the case. That's why the Sharia stops now. Is there, if there are two siblings and one prays and the other doesn't, but the one who prays doesn't care about the other sibling, whether they pray or not? No, he's not. You obviously should care in your heart. You should have it in your heart. You wish that he prays. Sheikh. If a woman prays in front of me to the side, is my salah invalid? Uh, if her, if she's right next to you, right next to you, then and there's no gap in between, and you're praying the same salat with the imam, right? Then yes. But if you're not praying behind an imam, or you know you're praying on your own and next to you, then it's fine. Start. Say you have a job interview and it's with a female and she goes to shake your hand. What to do? Can I shake? So just politely tell them you've got you've got a problem shaking. So you feel uncomfortable. Uh, I said, I know it's a tough, it's a tough issue. It's a tough issue. Is there any maximum length for the hair for men, as in head hair? Yeah? So it should not resemble any women hair. How to start studying the Hanafi fiqh? So start off with studying a, a basic text like fiqhul muyassar. Hamza Adam alaikum assalam ahla wa sahlan ma brazar. Random silly question start. Who was smart, Imam Ghazali or Ibn Taymiyyah? I don't know. I didn't take the, the IQ test. I find them both interesting and I heard they were extremely intelligent. Can I return a gift I won't use or for example someone gave me? Yes, you can. I'm waiting for the birth of my first child. MashaAllah, Mubarak, Mubarak, Mubarak. If a person, no wonder you're coming out with these questions. If a person uh, ear feels, if a person ear feels some kind of ring, if a person ear feels some kind of ring, does that mean they're being talked about? Allah knows best. I've never come across anything. Going back to the Haida question. So does she have to remain in the state of Ihram for days until she becomes pure for Umrah? So if a woman goes into Haid, she does how her she does her basic uh, goes into Ihram. If she's not gonna if she's gonna stay in Madi Mecca for a long time, she she waits, she doesn't do tawaf until she becomes clean. If she's not gonna stay there for long and she has to leave, she can go do tawaf in that state, but then she has to also pay for the slaughter of an animal. Yeah. So one slaughter of an animal she pays for, and that's fine then. Her umrah will be done. Have you read any of Mufti Muhammad Adam's articles on his website? Yes, I have. Mashallah, some of them are very beneficial. I haven't read too many of them. Some of them are very detailed, very beneficial. Uh, I, I personally benefit a lot from Mufti Ibn Adam. I know him very well, Mashallah. Okay. Right. Right, make sure you hit the like button, guys. Make sure you share my videos, yeah? I'm going to be upset if I find out you guys are not sharing my videos. You guys benefit from a live stream, but you don't share my videos. You just share my videos, guys. Share the vlogs. Put it on your statuses. Let us all get rewarded. Is it sinful, is it sinful to talk about your spouse's past sins they did before marriage, like Zina, after marriage, even though they've repented? Uh, it's not sinful unless the person's boasting about it. Yeah, if the person's boasting about it, then... Is it sinful to bring up... Sin? Okay, no. Salam, so how do I do istikhara for someone I'm interested to marry? My teacher said to do istikhara daily and then decide. I heard you said before istikhara is done once you're sure and you proceed with it. What about if you're unsure? Um, wassalam. Wassalam. Uh, do the one I mentioned.
I see. All right, so uh, uh, loop read quickly, post the curious cat. We can hear you start. Someone who lives close goes, uh, uh sound gone. I don't know, how does it feel to get slapped by a fish? Like, if it's like a shark or something. Yeah, you probably die. Salash, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan everybody. Stay kharaka onwards, sound cut off. Please, can you recap over the whole live stream listeners? Yeah, so look, when it comes to the istikhara issue, the istikhara issue, look, do not, I would say, do not do the, the feeling one, you know, the feeling one that all Asians teach each other. That you have to do istikhara, then you get this feeling, and just do the one that comes in the hadith. And that one that comes in the hadith is if you want to do anything, you simply just go for it and you do it. Yeah, so you go for it and you just do it. That's it. So if you want to buy a car, you're happy with the car, then just go for go for the car. Yeah, buy the car, inshallah. Um this is the most sound way. One second, let me just put my so this is the sound this is the sound way of doing it this is like the most easiest way you want to get married to someone are you happy with that person is everything ticked off okay right do istikhara and tell them yes you're ready uh istikhara question was curious cat one other questions here too Inshallah, uh, I guess sound system is faulty. I asked ChatGPT if there's a way to notify you if your mic cuts during streams. ChatGPT, there are settings you can notify if your mic cuts off. GPT, yes, there's a setting, the tools available, various platforms. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Notify you if your microphone cuts off for experience issues, though the specifics can depend upon the device operating systems. Here you have a few general approaches. Software feedbacks, some video conferencing tools and audio software visual indicators are notifications if they stop receiving audio signal. For example, platforms like Zoom, Microsoft Teams will often show you alert operating systems like depending on uh, sound settings, including microphones, third parties, they are third parties. Yeah, let's look into that. Uh, if the signal is lost, the tool, these tools can be particularly useful for streamers, podcasters, and professionals who rely heavily on their microphone hardware. Yeah, I think I'll have to. We missed down two songs. Yes, I can hear now. You just have to repeat again, guys. You just have to. Qadr of Allah. This is the Qadr of Allah. This is. Uh, you'll never be able to talk exactly how you did earlier without the audio. The sound is not faulty anymore. Alhamdulillah. Missed from the istikhara. The questions on here that you go. go oh. Was the one about Mufti bin Adam. So Mufti bin Adam, mashallah, benefited a lot from his talks, uh, from his uh, articles. I haven't read too many of them. It's a few of them. But benefit a lot, mashallah. Uh, Arsalan, wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan. Not a question, but the camera you use for vlogging is excellent. Yeah, mashallah. This is my camera. For those of you guys who have not seen this camera, this is the camera. Okay, it's, a, it's called a Osmo Pocket 3. Yeah, Osmo Pocket 3. So the camera you and it's mashallah 4K. That's why the quality is very good. And because it's uh, it's got its own built-in gimbal. Gimbal is this kind of like little movable camera that just floats around in the air. Uh 
Okay. Uh, did the Prophet ﷺ recite durood in salah? We assume he did. Yeah, because the Prophet ﷺ taught us this, so we assume that he did. If a program contains music, is it considered haram? Not necessarily. Check. I saw some of your vlogging videos. I like them. Consider lengthening them. How long would you guys think is is appropriate? In meetings at work, you sometimes end up with female managers in a room. Is there scope here if the door is closed? I would say the scope, yeah. Definitely scope. Because it's a, it's a professional environment, especially if it's at work. What are the chances of something flirting going on, fornication taking place there? The hadith normally talks about like a closed environment where there's a very strong chance of their for fornication taking place. Uh, what's the story reason behind the dua after Durud Ibrahim? What's the story the reason behind the dua? I don't know. The story you mean? Uh, 12 a.m. approaching. Oh yeah, 12 a.m. isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Two hours. It's been two hours and eleven minutes. Walaikum assalam. Sheikh, what's the easiest way to get rid of Dawis? Uh you can burn it, you can cut it up into pieces, throw it away. Uh I have a small stream in my garden. Is that going to be of use? As long as you just open it up, cut it up into pieces, throw it away, it's fine. Tell us a story that you that taught you something. A story that taught me something. Like an incident, yeah? An incident taught me something. Let me think. Um, an incident that taught me something is... Yeah, in Hajj. Uh, sorry, uh, in, in Umrah. When I went to Umrah. Um, so, as we were coming back with Medina Airport, and we were coming back to the UK, and in front of us, there were these uh, people from Kazakhstan. And it was like, they were all elderly. I would probably say the youngest amongst them was probably 60 years old. And then you have above. That's what I understood from them. And I was thinking, they could not understand English, no Arabic. Yet, because it was written for them, for, the, for them to come to Umrah. They came Umrah, have done their Umrah. They're on their way back now They couldn't even scan Like in the airport They didn't even have understanding Of how to scan the tickets Like to get through some of these Some of these doors Gates They didn't even know how to do that And you're thinking to yourself Look You know These people Will probably in their life Not travel anywhere Like these elderly kind of people They probably were not going to go on holiday anywhere Yet for Umrah These people actually Allah gave them tawfiq to come And this is the thing That I was thinking in my mind Is that When you go for Umrah These things it's in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Anything that happens in life Every single thing Never ever think to yourself You have the ability to do anything You obviously try your best You take the means But never ever think to yourself That it was me that done this It's because I'm educated Or it's because I live in the west Or it's because I can speak English Or it's because That's shaitan's sort of uh, You know Access point to you He gets into your ego He makes you feel superior over the people and you have no idea this elderly you know, group that came. You have no idea if they are more closer to Allah or you're closer to Allah. You have no idea at all. And just because a person is unfamiliar with how the world works, it has there's no cor 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 correlation between that and between close or distant from Allah. So, you know, just like in the Quran, Allah mentions about, you know, Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik. Are these people, these Quraysh, Kufar of Quraysh, Trying to decide who Allah should give wahi to. Right? So sometimes, you know, you might think to them, oh, this person deserves wahi, or this person deserves to become a messenger. Allah says, no. Nahnu qasamna baynahum ma'ishatahum. We are the ones who distribute sustenance to people. Ma'isha could be all sorts of things. Your intellect and your, you know, the amount of intellect you have is part of your qadr. The amount of exposure you have to your friends is part of your qadr. The family you're born in is your qadr. The amount of education you've had is in your qadr. The amount of even sins you've fallen into is in your qadr as well. So it's just like, end of the day, you have to realize qadr is the most powerful thing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's hard, it's, the, it's the, impossible for humans to understand divine decree, qadr. But qadr is, qadr is one of the most powerful things that you have. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, is it sinful to talk about your spouse's past sins? Uh, no, it's not. Unless you do it out of boastfulness, showing off, then it is. Uh, your sound is off. Audio, audio is gone. Salam, Sheikh. Now, what's the easiest way for me to dispose of a taweez? Throw it away. Just cut it up into pieces. Burn it. Whatever you want to do with it. Okay, Aisha Mufti, will you be running streams during Ramadan al Kareem? I don't know. I'll see. Last year I did, and it was usually around uh, late afternoon time. It was about late afternoon time. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. If I miss Zuhur and I go to the masjid and Asad time entered at 3.15, but the mosque prays at 3.30, would Zuhur Salat be Qada? Uh, yes. I like it at around 10 20 minutes. I prayed Zuhur and forgot what rakat I was on. I assumed four, so I sat. Uh, yeah, Sajjah Sahu is fine. I assume this was the fourth, and I did Sajjah Sahu. Yeah, Sajjah Sahu. Do I need gloves or anything like that to dispose, Sheikh? No, you don't. Does the dumb slaughter of animal umrah have to take place in the. It has to take place in around Makkah. That's a beautiful reminder. Yeah, subhanAllah. I was thinking about this yesterday. Powerful. Do you recommend any course website where one can learn Masail about Hayes? Um, I think Mufti Abdurrahman Mangera's wife. So if you contact uh, them, Zamzam Academy or White Thread, I think White Thread, they do a course on Hayes. Salam ahla wa sahlan ATL. What's your favorite or go to Urdu Fatawa book? Um, I don't really read too many Urdu Fatawa books. If I do, then it's probably Kifayat al Mufti. Ahsan al-Fatawa, Imdad al-Fatawa, uh, and uh, Fatawa Uthmani. Those are probably the ones I go to. Uh, I, if I have done my Tahari and pray, then I later find out it was wrong way, Tahari and pray, wrong time. What's the rule? Then it's fine. Salat's fine. What's the hikmah behind having the beard other than Allah knows best? All right, guys, I'm going to finish it there. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. I do apologize for the sound. So I'll tell you why this happens with the sound. Let me tell you why this happens with the sound. This is basically the mic system that I have. Right? So I've got three mic systems that I use. This is one. And this is basically you have this section which you connect onto your camera. And then you have these two mics. And I just need to use one anyway. And these are portable, so I can move around anywhere. It doesn't pick up all the sound around me. It's very, very, very good for that. So I use this. This is a common one that I've been using recently. The problem with this is, is that because I've been, sometimes I use it and I, and I don't realize that the battery has finished on here. This is why it happens. Yeah, so again, it's just one of those, some hit and miss things. The other one is using this one over here. This is my shotgun mic. So the Rode shotgun mic is a very good mic, picks up sound. The only problem is if I move away, then the sound of this kind of disappears, as you can tell. And if I get close, then the sound gets better. And sometimes it can pick up things slightly around. Then I've got a third mic, which I use called the, this is called the Blue Yeti Pro mic. Yeah, this is the first mic someone actually sent me, donated to me, and they wanted it for Sadaqa Jaria for their parents. And I made so many of my videos on this, loads of videos, like, Nearly all the Quran, early Quran videos I made was made on this and the early Quduri ones and so many benefiting the rewards Sadaqa Jariya for them. This is a one that I've been using for a very long time, several years. And now this is the latest one. I enjoy using this one. This is much more easier to maneuver and, and use as well. That's why it happens, guys. The amount of times I actually sometimes will make a video, a whole video, and sometimes the mic might cut out Sometimes the, some settings will go off and I lose the whole recording. And it happened to me several times. And uh, it's just sometimes when you deal with technology, you have to realize with technology, uh, you are going to get these things. For you, it's strange, isn't it? For you guys, you think it's, oh, how come it happens? It's frustrating for you guys. But you don't realize if you start this stuff, you are going to get this. It's going to be very common to have glitches. Very, very common. 
Yeah, if I had a team, the only other way alternative would be if I had a team. And a lot of these YouTubers, they have teams behind them that do all the recording and everything and backups. And uh, that's basically what I need. That's a that's like the the highest step. You guys need to support my channel. You guys need to sponsor my channel on a monthly basis. So get people to sponsor my channel so I can uh, invest in these things. But that's basically what happens. Zakhlah khair, Hayati. Have a nice, wonderful down under. Can we read the leaving a gathering dua before leaving the stream? Inshallah. Sheikh, do you have any tips on learning Arabic for a non-Arabic speaker who already knows how to read and write? So what do you want, my brother? Do you want to know how to speak Arabic? Is it speak spoken Arabic or do you want comprehension Arabic? What do you want? Inshallah. Okay, wa alaikum salam. Why don't you... So the problem is I can't use both. You can't plug in both into the system that I have. Yeah, for that you'd have to have an advanced system to have two mics at once and then there's going to be too much sound. Um, Reverberation. And get someone else. Yeah, so see, the problem would be you have never done this in your life. So you have no experience of what you're talking about. I'm not saying in a derogatory way. What I'm saying is, uh, so you, you don't so you, you don't realize what happens behind the scenes and how many times problems happen. So, so this is why, I mean, if you think about how many streams have I done, how many times has the mic gone? I mean, you've only started recently joining. But how mics is hardly like on. So you got you guys gotta have sabr, guys. It'd be especially you. You gotta have loads of sabr. You're too jazbati. In Arabic, the jam al qilla indicates three to nine, and the word ashur is jam al qilla, but months are twelve. How does that work out? So next time, inshallah, ask me HK. I'm gonna finish that. Both comprehension and spoken. So if you want comprehension, then you need to study. Uh, progressive books like Medina series you can do or anything like that you can do my Quranic Arabic 17 lessons on my Uruk start with that uh, it's 50 pounds for the course spoken you need other people to speak with so you need to do like a course where you are speak learning how to speak and you also need to speak with other people what can I say I just want the best yeah true true all right guys take care inshallah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.